Welcome back to Recap IT. Today we are going to recap a 2019 comedy movie titled How to Build a Girl. A teenage girl tries to reinvent herself after getting a job as a music critic. Later, she goes on a path of self-destruction after realizing that negativity is the path to success in her profession. But before we begin, please consider subscribing to this channel. Now without wasting any further time, let's begin shall we? Our film begins with a young woman named Joanna moaning about how dull her life is. She's having trouble finding a suitable man because she's never been in a relationship before. She returns home after a day at school, where she is surrounded by her five siblings. She is desperate and attempts to find a way out of town. Despite her desire to be a writer, she is ultimately chosen as a finalist in a poem contest. The next day at school, Joanna and her brother Chrissy discuss which boys she would want to date if she became famous. Mrs. Belling, Joanna's instructor, later complains about her long assignment and urges her to shorten it next time. Joanna and her father drive to a poem contest that is being televised on a news TV show a few hours later. Unfortunately, Joanna has trouble pronouncing her poetry on camera about breeding collie dogs. Her nerves apparently get the best of her, and she ends up embarrassing herself on national television. As a result, the other contender wins since his poetry is more appropriate for the general audience. Chrissy walks Joanna home the next day to shield her from bullying. Finally, DSS arrives to speak with Joanna's father, who is illegally breeding dogs. As a result, they take away the majority of their technological devices. Chrissy, on the other hand, tells her that all will work out and recommends her to go through the newspaper employment listings. She starts writing a poem for the job right away. She is contacted for an interview a few days later, and she can barely contain her excitement. Joanna boards a train the next day for the interview. When she arrives, though, she discovers that the institution is full of misogynistic guys. They send her on her way without even interviewing her because she isn't conventionally gorgeous. They tell her that the position is not for her, despite the fact that they think her writing is excellent. When Joanna is crying in the bathroom, she has a vision of a sign nearby pushing her to compel them to hire her. As a result, Joanna bursts into the room, begging them to give her a chance. Fortunately, a man named Tony agrees to give her his next duty in order for her to prove herself. Joanna, overjoyed, assures them that they will not be disappointed. After a few hours, Chrissy assists Joanna by giving her all of his money for a makeover, as she wishes to look like she belongs. Because she works as a rock music critic, her father, who used to be in his own band, tries desperately to get her to evaluate his songs in the hopes of gaining some sort of fame. He takes her to a club where she is meant to appraise a band for her task after she agrees. Joanna understands when she's finished how much she's been losing out on by not listening to rock before. Joanna becomes more at ease in her profession as the weeks pass. However, because she works long hours, it keeps her away from her family. Fortunately, the bullying ends at school, where her publications are recognized by the pupils. She then manages to give her family whatever they desire. Joanna arrives into the workplace a few hours later, declaring that she wants her own feature. She sits on her co-worker's lap when he tries to bother her. However, because of her weight, he swiftly falls in and grants her the feature she desires. He then informs her that she would be interviewing John, a well-known rock star. Joanna meets with John a few days later, who is bombarded with her questions. He appears to inquire if this is her first interview, which she confirms. He takes a shine to her right away and invites her to hang out with him instead of doing the interview. John has to perform with his band at night, so they spend the entire day together. As a result, he invites Joanna to join him on stage so she may see him perform. John returns her to his hotel room after the show to resume his interrogation. When she inquires about his childhood, she discovers that his family was impoverished and that his mother died when he was a child. For the sake of her siblings, Joanna chooses to inform him about her own mother, who has been neglecting her. They eventually spend the entire night talking about their common interests. Joanna returns home the next day to tell her father that she has fallen in love. She struggles to write the interview because she is perplexed. She, on the other hand, decides to write whatever she wants. She then drifts off in the middle, dreaming about kissing John. Joanna sends her interview article the next day, but her boss hates it because it's plainly biased. She is constantly expecting a phone call from the office, but it never arrives. Joanna tries to get into a club late at night. Her name, however, does not appear on the list. Fortunately, she has a dream in which John encourages her to keep going because her career is only getting started. The next day, Joanna arrives into the workplace and is greeted by quiet. She then tries to communicate with Tony. 
he eventually gives her some advice, telling her to drop the teen girl act because being disrespectful will garner her the attention she deserves. Thankfully, this catches her manager's notice, and he seems to prefer this type of writing. Her publications throughout the weeks have resulted in a fan base that follows her around everywhere she goes. Joanna then delves into her sexual side, having sex at least a dozen times. She hasn't had an orgasm with any of them, though. Joanna asks her father for a ride one day, but he tells her he sold their car and tells her to print out an album so she may listen to it. Later that night, Joanna tosses her father's album onto a stack of records. Her co-workers, however, despise it and demand that she shoot it with a shotgun. She's obliged to do it because they don't know it's her father's record. A few days later, Joanna attends a work party with her employees, where she is named asshole of the year. She evidently takes satisfaction in receiving the prize. However, she notices John from across the stage and approaches him. He asks her to tell him one true thing when they're in the middle of a conversation. She tells him she's in love with him. When she tries to kiss him, he refuses her and says it's not his style. As a result, Joanna wakes up the next morning to find Tony in her bed and decides to reveal John's secrets to the public. Joanna returns to school a few hours later, where she is forced to abandon her employment by Mrs. Belling. Joanna, on the other hand, decides to quit going to school. As a result, her parents decide to intervene. When they condemn her, she claims that they have no right to do so because they never looked after her as a child. She decides to leave the house after that. Joanna decides to go to a pool party with her co-workers a few hours later. She needs to adapt because she doesn't have a swimsuit with her. She overhears them talking negatively about her physique in the restroom and sees Tony kissing a female. So, when she goes out, she tells them she's been doing all of their work anyhow, and then she quits. When Joanna arrives home a few hours later, Chrissy has moved his bedroom downstairs. To make matters worse, she discovers that John has read her essay since he has written her a message expressing sorrow for their friendship. When she asks her mother for assistance, she apologizes and rushes to the infants. She tries to take her own life while she is all alone. Fortunately, her mother locates her before she passes away. Joanna is lying in a hospital bed. Her mother then comes in to see how she is doing. She regrets not being able to be there for her. Finally, Joanna is surrounded by her family, including Chrissy, whom she has harmed. Joanna arrives home and removes all of her articles off the wall, revealing her old posters once more. Fortunately, she and Chrissy reconcile, and he returns to his next room. Joanna decides to make atonement for what she did a few hours later. As a result, she calls each person she interviewed and expresses her regret in person. Joanna later writes about self-harm in order to present it to another company. Fortunately, the manager is so taken with the work that she offers her a position right away. Joanna feels valued after she compliments her abilities. However, she chooses to apologize to John in person, despite his utter disregard for her. Despite his refusal to listen to her, she shows him the true article she authored on him. She also gives him her cut-off hair, which she considers to be her most prized possession. He appears to have forgiven her. Nonetheless, he merely tells her that the reason he turned her down was due to her age. In the end, he promises to stay friends with her and accompany her on future travels, and this is where the movie comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed it, as always until next time.